Welcome back to Guess. I know you've been to Guess for a number of years now and I've just grabbed you off the stage after your talk. Do you want to tell me a bit about your talk and, and how it went? The talk was, was, was very well. It's great to be back face to face, which was actually uh, 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 surprising and nice. I was at the Guess last year in September when we were just reopening and we were talking about the challenges of the reopening, but it was great to be back. And I think you were talking about sort of aspirational leaders. Why do you think it's important for, for teachers to be aspirational and, and look forward to being leaders? Well, look, the, the, the pandemic has taught us one thing, that we, there's, a, there's a drainage in, in school leaders out there, those who can pivot quickly and, and, and be able to adapt to any changing circumstance. You can only do that when you have climbed the ladder step by step from being a teacher into a medium, a middle leader into a senior leader. And I encourage every teacher to do that because uh, that's the way forward. They shouldn't put a, a block in front of their uh, career growth. Uh, and the only career growth in the education sector is to be a, a school leader. And, and, and that's why uh, teachers need to aspire to be leaders and need to be to understand the challenges of being a school leader, especially after what we have seen in the past 18 or 20 months. And what would be the one piece of learning you'd hope that a visitor took away from your talk today? They need to take away that despite the challenges and the difficulties, being a school leader is a fascinating thing. It's, it's something that uh, I look forward to every morning when I wake up to go to the office and see what storm is gonna come to my door and to be able to to adjust and find the solutions to any problem that we face. And this is the one thing that I can advise everyone to take from my speech today. Great, and obviously things changed a lot in the last two years. What do you think are some of the key changes and trends that have happened? Well, in terms of guests, as you can see, we're back to face to face. And last year it was online, virtual, which is which is good. In terms of education, of course, the technology has, has taken over completely in education. I was just speaking to my uh, vice principal this morning about the challenges that we're facing with allowing kids to, to get their devices and slash their mobile phones to school and that was banned before uh, simply because they need to show their Al Hassan app that they have the green pass to enter. These are the, uh, the things that have changed and now as school leaders we need to pivot and find the solutions for. For example, now we're creating a parallel virtual uh, Wi-Fi network that will be dedicated solely for students that has certain uh, parameters and restrictions on it. Uh, we need to uh, recreate and rewrite the policies for, uh, uh, for the digital resources slash devices that are being brought to school. Uh, we need to educate students on uh, how, to, how to make use of that resource while in school and outside school. There are lots of things that change. But the main thing that has uh, 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 augmented education is now the integration of, of technology in education. There was, before the pandemic, there was a, I think, I, I don't have stats for that, and a, but from my anecdotal evidence, there was, there was a debate about whether technology will substitute, replace, make education better or worse. What we have seen in the pandemic is that technology can, ac can actually assist education, make education easier, uh, make it more dangerous, uh, but accessible to everybody. I think that's definitely one of the benefits that it's been more accessible, but I think one of the things we've also been hearing, I guess, is about the need for wellness and well-being and mental resilience. Is that something you found has has fallen a bit by the wayside or something you're sort of focusing on now as well at school? Look, I don't know uh, uh, about other schools, but as far as I'm concerned, it has, it's a challenge because that's the one thing that we as school leaders were not ready for. And we always thought that everybody is good all the time and they can um, work from nine to five and go home and uh, sit down and relax and do the thing. Uh, the impact of being away and isolated and quarantined uh, uh, is yet to to surface. I think fully, it is surfacing here and there. We're seeing some some traces of it, but 
the, the real impact is yet to surface. And um, that's another thing that as, a, as school leaders, we need to uh, start working on uh, putting plans, strategies, programs uh, to make sure that we care about the staff and the children well-being, uh, not, not, not during the pandemic, but uh, at all times. Uh, historically, it used to fall under safeguarding, child protection, uh, disclosure issues, but now, no, it has, has, has become a standalone issue that needs to be uh, 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 tackled on a daily basis. <laughs>